Hi guys and welcome to Hologic. Today I'm going to be bringing you the review of this Pagani Design PD1707 and this is the chronograph version of this one that I brought to you a while back. You might have seen the Includes Pay Promotion icon in there and that is because this watch was sent for free by the Pagani Design AliExpress official store. But that does not mean that I'm going to give it any slack I'm going to keep it honest as usual guys. This watch will set you back $76, which is quite good for what is on offer here. We'll discuss about that later. There are two more options. There's a blue dial option with white subdials, and there's the reverse panda with uh, black dial and white subdials. All coming at the same price. As usual, all the links are in the description below. So if you fancy to buy this watch, please do use my links. You will be helping the channel a bunch and it will not cost you anything. So let's go, let's get right into it. And you might be wondering why I have three watches in here with me if I'm only going to be talking about this one. Well, do you remember I brought you the review of uh, the non-chronograph version a few months back and that had a lot of issues at the time. It was a pretty nice watch, but it did have a lot of issues. And I just wanted to see if in the meantime they had solved those issues. And this one, the Carison Royal Oak Homage, is just here so you can tell me if you would like me to compare these two at some time. What have we here? We've got a watch that is a homage of the very expensive Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Chronograph, not the offshore, but the chronograph. It has a tri-compact layer, as you can see, and I have chosen the Panda version. Just like the original, it has integrated bracelets and that very characteristic octagon shape. Beating inside this one, we've got the very worthy Japanese Seiko VK63, and that is a mega quartz movement that we'll be speaking about later. Let's first talk about dimensions for this one and we've got a diameter of 40, a height of 10.8, a log to log of 46.6 .6, and an end link to end link measure of 50.7. This is the measure you're looking for to see how this watch is going to wear on you. When it meets the case the bracelet is 25.6 and in the end, at the very end, it is 19.8, so 20 let's say. So a very nice taper that you can see in there. Pretty cool. As you can see, the tapisserie dial from the original Royal Oak and from the non chronograph version is carried here. And is very nicely made, quite complex. You've got the Pagani Design Applied logo at 12. And you've got your tri-compact layers with at 3 the 24-hour sub-dial very useful at six the second sub dial and you can see that second hand ticking in there because yes this is a mega quartz as i have told you and there's this cross on that sub dial which draws attention to it quite nice and at nine you've got the minute counter for the chronograph and of course you've got a date window at 4 30. as with the non-chronograph version the indices are applied and there is loom on it, we will see the loom later. I'm not expecting a miracle here. Finally, around the dial, you've got your tachymeter scale. You can do a lot of calculations and many, many other things with a tachymeter scale. We haven't discussed those hands, and it's because there's pretty much nothing to say here. They're pretty classic baton hands, just like you've got on the real thing. And the chronograph hands are just bat on hands as well, so nothing special here, nothing to see. Hey, the Lumin here is better than expected, but as you can see, they have made the same mistake, sadly, of putting more on the indices and not as much on the hands, which makes it quite pointless. So come on, Pagan Design, do put some more loom on those hands, we'll all be thankful. With these very affordable watches, I always like to check if we do have indeed sapphire as advertised and yes we do as you can see 
Let's continue with the front of this watch. You've got your classical octagon shape that is very visible here, and that comes courtesy of the Audemars Piguet original. The bezel is where everything is at. On the Audemars Piguet version, this is a pure octagon. As you saw on the video of the non chronograph version, you have something more complex in here with more facets and with, I believe it was 16 sides, so quite a bit complex here on a watch that is only around 70 euros. Let's talk about those screws in there. The shape of the screws is circular, so no octagon like in the original in here. I do not believe they are functional either. If we compare it with the non chronograph version, you can see that, at least on my version here, the screws are much better done. They're way more flush with the rest of the dial, and they look much more quality. It is still not perfect. Take a look at the screw at one. Uh, you can see it is not as flush as the other ones, but it is still much better quality than on the other one. The mistake they have repeated here, sadly, is the fact that the brushing, the vertical brushing on that bezel is crooked to the left. Again, not as bad as with the other version, but still crooked to the left. That is so sad. Everything is good and nice with this watch, but for that. And there's a feeling of carelessness in here, which is strange because all the rest of the watch is quite well made. Something that I was wary of was this bracelet, and especially the flushness of it with the rest of the case. And on this version, at least on the very first version that I got, the bracelet was not entirely flush with the rest of the case, and I fried them for that. <laughs> and I believe that in uh, the next version they made it better, and that is good and all. And uh, I believe that they learned the lesson here, because on this version, as you can see, it is again flush, and that is very good. As we were speaking about the case, well, the finishing is, of course, vertically brushed all over, including on the bracelet, and on the sides you've got brushing as well, which is horizontal, and you've got a bevel just to separate the front and the sides, and to give a bit of refinement to this watch. You can find that bevel separating the sides and the back of the watch as well. Pretty nice touch. At the back of the watch, you can see the Pagani design sports and the reference of the watch and the fact that it is full stainless steel and that it is 200 meters water resistant. That is pretty impressive, a 200 meter water resistant watch. And that comes courtesy of the fact that you've got three screw and crowns here. I want to operate the chronograph, but I cannot because you've got a screw down crown for the chronograph pushers and beam. Then it stopped. And let me screw it down as well. And bam, then it is back to zero. You've also got a screw down crown ensuring those 200 meters of water resistance. Very well made, guys. Let's see how the VK63 in here operates. You push that start button and there's a mechanical feeling here because as I told you, the VK63 is a mega quartz and everything that regards the chronograph operation is mechanical. Therefore, that mechanical feel when you push the chronograph. Everything regarding the timekeeping, the main timekeeping, is done, is kept by the quartz mechanism in here. Okay, and there is a neat feature about this VK63, if you do not know about it already, it's the fact that you've got some kind of flyback. If you push the back to zero button, even though the second hand is running, beam, it goes back to zero and it stays there. That is a bit different from your classical flyback, which comes usually on much more expensive timepieces. The second hand goes back to zero, but starts again. Here, it stays at zero. Let's talk about the bracelet. They have not gone for the Audemars Piguet bracelet with two very small links. They have gone with an H-link bracelet. Nothing bad with that one. We've got a butterfly clasp here. 
nothing to write home about with Pagani, Pagani on both sides. Everything is solid and milled here. So, very nice. However, you just have a push pin, not a huge problem, especially at this price point. So, what do you think of this little Pagani design Audemars Piguet Crown Royal Fromage? Well, it is not a bad watch if you're looking for a homage of this very model and you do not have 15,000 or 20,000 euros to spend. Very worthy. Uh, you might want to check with Pagani Design that they do send you uh, one that does not have a crooked finish. Uh, you can write them a message and let them know and tell them, please make sure that it does not. Make sure that everything is straight and I'm sure they will sort you out. Besides from that, the quality is quite good, especially for the price. Uh, you've got a very nice VK63 in here. You've got sapphire glass. Uh, you've got pretty nice construction. If you fancy this model, why not? They have corrected most of what was wrong on the QC department with the non chronograph version. So that is good. It is good to see companies correcting themselves, doing things better. What remains to be seen is, is it any better that, than the Caxon? And remember that on the non chronograph versions, I did, I did make a comparison for you. If you want me to make a comparison of this Caxon with this Pagani design, please do let me know. I'll be glad to, to do that. Thank you very much for having watched the video. Why don't you go check the review? of the non-chronograph version and why don't you check the review of these non-chronograph compared against the Caddison. Thanks again for watching and I'll be seeing you very soon on these reviews. Goodbye.